Thank you very much. We hope that we can give you something that is at least going to ignite some um, marvelous things that you're going to be able to take back with you. Again, um, this is using outcomes and rubrics in Canvas. We are from Bridgerland Applied Technology College. We are um, hands-on, competency-based, employer-guided, career and technical education. We dual enroll. We have post and secondary students at the same time. We have traditional, some lockstep and some technology enhanced methodologies. We are non-credit bearing. We are clock hour. Um, we are open entry, open exit, self-paced, competency based. Think about that. Okay. There is no defined entry and no defined exit. Um, I used to teach in information technology. I taught all of the Microsoft courses, Net Plus, A Plus, Security Plus. Um, I would have students in every single one of those classes sitting in the same classroom at the same time. So we have to we have to think out of the box and we need to do things a little bit differently. So as you can see, we do some pretty fun things. We actually have 29 programs that we have. What we did was we had a charge for some of our instructors. We said it, it was voluntary. And what we said was, we want you to use technology to enhance your curriculum. Be innovative in the student's learning environment. Help and reduce um, bottlenecks. We have some programs that have a wait list of six months. That's not OK. We're losing students because of that. Um, we need to figure out a way to reduce those bottlenecks right there. And for our instructors, um, for an example, uh, shop safety. If we have students coming in every single day of the week, high school students, we, we serve 12 different high schools. Where, if you were to ask our instructors, where do you want to be, they're going to tell you, I want to be in the lab. I don't want to be teaching safety to all of my students. I want to be teaching them how to make a cabinet. So those were some of the things that we wanted to do. Plus, um, if students are working online, it's freeing up some of that lab time so we can put more students in the lab. And then just the sheer nature of open entry, open exit. How do we make this work a little bit better? We had two programs that literally took this charge and jumped on the bandwagon. And you cannot find, even though they're both in the, what I would call medical profession, they're different. Our nursing program is traditional, continuous sequential instruction. It is lockstep. They all enroll at the same time. They all end at the same time they jumped on this bandwagon. They progress from simple to complex um, concepts and theories. The theory and skill are taught concurrently and then utilized immediately. They go from the classroom the same day into the lab. And our labs simulate the healthcare environment. They are there for the first semester and then they start going out into their clinicals. Our dental program is completely different. Open entry, open exit. They come in at any time. And we teach four-handed, chair-side dental assisting. Okay, Again, totally, totally different. Uh, but they do have simulated labs. It looks just like the dentist's office. 
And what this program decided to do was they went completely, totally paperless. This was what the students used to have. This was the binder that they got. They have gone completely, we tried to find, we actually made this binder up because they don't have them anymore. <laughs> they have gone completely, totally paperless. Okay, now we'll get into the meat of what we used. Okay, outcomes, they measure the endpoint. Outcomes are used in Canvas for reporting. Remember that. You can have competencies in your rubrics, but unless it is an outcome, you cannot pull a report from it. And you'll see what we did with some outcomes. All of our competencies we didn't put in as outcomes, but they are in our um, rubrics. Okay, rubrics. Um, are a good way to set up customized or outcome-based assessments for scoring criteria. It's an assessment tool to communicate to your students and for your instructors to use on what your expectation is. What, what is quality? Most of our programs, because we are competency-based, the majority have to attain 80%. Nursing is 90%. So our students need to have that level of competency before they can move on. So if they don't attain that level, they don't go any further. Okay? Rubrics are rows and columns. Rows define the various criteria that are being used and assessed. And columns are used to define the levels of performance for each criteria. Okay. Again, we're competency-based and our competencies become our outcomes. So here, for example, is a rubric that we use. One of the criteria is to correctly alphabetize a patient chart. To do that correctly, if they did it right, the student gets two points. If they, they didn't quite meet it at a certain level, they get one point, or if they don't meet it, they get zero. You do not want to measure a student that does something correctly every single time as an outcome when you're reporting to employers that this student is on the same level as somebody that had to do a task three times. So this is what we came up with. You can see in there, um, so we have our attempts. First attempt gets 20 points. Second attempt, 15 points. At the end of the program, the student actually has a numeric evaluation, one through four. Four being they were an excellent student, okay? Um, and then time, we use this for reporting uh, for Pell because we are seat time. Okay, now what we want to do is we're going to start and we're going to show you where we went. We'll, we'll start with our nursing program and show you how they utilized our outcomes and rubrics. And what I'm going to do is turn the time over to Heather. Thank you. Um, as we mentioned, unlike most programs at Bridgerland, our nursing program, they start at the same time, they progress at the same pace, and they end at the same time. As you can see here, it's literally a lab. We want to simulate a hospital setting where they're proving their skills, so that's what you see here. And again, it's didactic instruction, so they'll go to a classroom, then they go straight to the lab to practice what they just learned. Um, what they did, the nursing instructors took their outcomes. So a lot of our instructors at our school, when we threw out the word rubric, they didn't even know what that meant. <laughs> so we said to them, look at your lab sheets. This is what our instructors had. This is what they took into the lab with them on a clipboard. Thank you, Lee. And the students would have to complete each set of these tasks. So we said, you've already built your rubric. You just don't know what the, the lingo is. So that's actually what we use to build the rubrics in Canvas. So in nursing, the students have 14 hands-on lab assignments, and they have multiple criteria. So using the lab sheet, they've already had paper. So the instructors would then take 
um, the iPads into the lab because they can use SpeedGrader with the rubrics. So instead of having a, a worksheet for each student, and then there would be three to four instructors for each lab. So there's stations. The student would start out with one instructor. That instructor would mark off the points on the worksheet. The student would then move to the next instructor to finish the next set of criteria, and so on until they completed the lab. Well, now all the instructors have an iPad. They sit in the station. They pull up the student's name, and they tap on the the iPad to give them the feedback on each item. When they move to the next instructor, that instructor just pulls up the student, continues where they left off. When the student leaves the lab, they have immediate feedback. They don't wait for the instructors to get together after class with 30 or more of these worksheets that they have to put together, put in a grade book, and then get that feedback to the students. It's immediate and it's all recorded in here. Yes. Is everyone familiar with SpeedGrader, by the way? I'm, yeah. I'm seeing lots of no's. <laughs> okay, so SpeedGrader is an app that you can use. You can access it through the um, web version of Canvas, or you can use it on an iPad. They like the iPads because, again, they're, they're chair side. They have to be mobile. But literally, when you create the rubric in Canvas, you whether you're in the web version or on the mobile app, you literally just tap on the criteria to issue the rating. It's very, check it out. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Can you pull speed grader up here? So while Lee's looking that up, to show you an example. Is everyone here pretty familiar with rubrics in Canvas, by the way? Yes. Okay, mostly yeses, some no's. Sorry, we are working in a live class, so please, <laughs> I, I know we're, uh, it's a good thing this student doesn't have anything in here. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, um, and by the way, for those of you that are not familiar with rubrics, Canvas has a help button on the top right corner of every page. Go to that button and look up rubrics. They'll show you step by step how to build these. It's a simple process to build these. The hardest part is getting the criteria, but we already had that. It was done for us. We just simply entered it in, so just to tell you that. So here, if I was sitting next to a student, Marcy Ashcroft, as an instructor, if I was on my iPad, I would just tap. If she did it perfectly, I can tap two points, one points, two points, and so on. And it corrects it immediately, scores it in the grade book. Other instructors can see that. And you can type feedback if you need to. It's very slick. For those of you that have nursing programs, think about your clinicals. Think about your clinical sites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Okay, so this is an example of the rubric, and it's literally line by line exactly what we pulled off of that worksheet that they used to take into the lab. So hopefully, even if your program is different, then you can see how this would work in your programs. Okay, and here we wanted to show this example. This is actually a screenshot of an iPad. So Natalie's one of our nursing instructors. As you can see, each instructor in the class has a drop-down arrow here. So if there were three instructors, you would simply choose the instructor that you wanted to see the points that they gave. So it's instant communication for instructors, for students, very efficient. Okay, and here's an example of our dental assisting lab. Again, it's chair-side, they are literally in a dental lab when they go in. And theirs is different, as we said. They are open enrollment. So these students, each of them might be at a different place in the program. So. Tell them how they schedule their lab time. Okay, so the students would come in, it's self paced. So they'd go through book work. They'd get their huge binder, literally this thick. <laughs> they'd work through the worksheets. And then when they got to the point that they needed to go to the lab, they would go make an appointment to be in the lab with an instructor. Again, the instructor had a big binder of the checkoffs that they would do. So the student would go through that lab and um, complete that assignment. Then they'd go back to the classroom self-paced, complete the next set of worksheets from the binder, and so on. Um, this way, again, same thing, they're, they're chair side with them, with their iPads. And our dental instructors actually, some might think this is swearing all of you Apple users, but they really like the Android um, devices. So both work very well though. So whatever your preference is, you have the option. Okay, so now the dental program is a flipped classroom. 
Um, the students can come in. They've, as we said, they've gone paperless. So they, the nursing instructors put their labs online. That's about it. N dental went full blown. Everything's online. So the students will enroll into Canvas. They go through the modules. They go through the materials. Um, when they're ready for a lab, they still schedule the lab. But then it's all automated. They have one grade book. The instructors don't spend weekends trying to enter grades from three or four different areas, literally stacks of papers. Um, it's all centralized in Canvas for them. Okay, and here's an example of their, um, their rubrics in Canvas and their point system. And there's a screenshot of the speed grader in Canvas from the Android device. Okay, so as you can see, here's a picture of our nursing instructor, Natalie. This is a student, and I just walked in their lab and asked if I could take this picture. Um, so this is what they're doing all day. Um, she is entering in the, the, the score for that student, and they give a lot of feedback. So they actually will type comments to that student. If they miss something, they want the student to know why, and they want the other instructors to know why. So they have the ability to type a comment there for the student. And we actually, you can videotape as well. So they will likely start videotaping the student because that's a very rigid program. It has to be perfect. If a student comes in and says, well, you didn't mark me correct on that, but I actually did that, instant replay. Okay, well, let's take a look. If you did it, I'll give you the credit. If not, you'll know what to go back and do better next time. So this is the uh, dental assisting one of the modules in one of their courses. So. They start out with their syllabus, and they work through um, each exercise, and they've incorporated a lot of video. So the students will go in, they'll watch a lot of videos to demonstrate, um, they have lots of quizzes, but I will say, you know, we're not a, a higher ed institution. We don't, a lot of things, we're a round peg trying to fit in a square hole. So, and moving an instructor that's always had paper for everything, it doesn't just, come over perfectly. So we had to be pretty creative with them and they had to be pretty willing to try new things to make this work. Once we got past those learning curves and figured out how to make Canvas work for their needs, they love it. They absolutely love it. They are the biggest cheerleaders for Canvas. And it has saved them so much time. One of our instructors said, I've literally organized myself out of <laughs> work. I need, I, she has so much more time with students in the lab when they have questions. She used to spend, all, literally her job was to spend time organizing all the papers. And that's pretty much done for her. So it's been wonderful. And this is one of our dental instructors. Um, this picture's not in our lab, our lab is torn up. It, it flooded. So they've been just relocated into a temporary classroom. But there you can see a student performing a lab with some dental instruments. And as again, they have the Android device. So she has a stylus pen that she's just marking the, the score. Um, yes, there's already questions, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that question was, have we been able to share rubrics across courses, and can we do reporting at the course level? Did I word that? Per, per, outcome. per outcome. Okay, so as we mentioned, and step up here, um, the rubrics don't have to have outcomes. So if you create an outcome, that is at a sub-account or a course level, that's what you would do reporting with. So if you need to do reporting, remember, you have to use the outcomes. So you create the outcomes and then you pull those outcomes into the rubric. So for us, we have to do reporting on the hours and the attempts. Those are the only two pieces of information in there that were an actual outcome. And yes, you can sh if you create the outcomes that would apply to several courses, you can pull them into all of those courses to make it very efficient. Those were all done at the, the sub-account level. And so when we're creating that rubric, you just pull them in. It's wonderful, heavenly. Did that answer your question? Okay, I saw hands. We haven't, um, because 
they're individual courses, if that makes sense. So, you know, the content is housed within that particular course. So we haven't had the need to do that. Um, right. <laughs> Excuse me. So I can see where you're going, though. What you're what you're thinking is that you have a, a question bank at the sub account level, and then you just pull into the individual courses. Mm -hmm. We have not done anything that way. It's all been at the course level. And for those of you that didn't hear that question, is if have we done uh, quizzes at the sub account level? Any other questions? What I want to reiterate, and, and, and we really hope that this got some creative juices going for you, this has saved immense hours just in a week for our instructors. They used to take home a folder about this thick every Friday with all of those sheets in it to transfer what the students had done into their manual grade book. And then the following week, the students got their feedback. I don't know about your students, but mine didn't like that at all. They now have immediate feedback. They leave their lab setting and go back, and everything is right there in the gradebook for them. And bonus, the instructors don't take that big binder home anymore. Um, we've had several instructors say to us, I actually have time with my children now <laughs> that I didn't have before. It's, it's really, and, and what's been fun for Heather and I is that the, the word is in the hall. We don't have to go preach Canvas now. Our instructors are doing it for us. Can you explain the sub-account level? Um, sub-account, actually, there's, there's multiple levels that you can have. So you have your institution. And then what we did was we set up sub-accounts under the institution. And we did that. We chose to do that by program. So a sub-account is our dental program, our business program, our um, practical nursing. So that is a sub-account. We have a cosmetology. Under cosmetology, we have additional sub-accounts, esthetician, barbering, those kinds of things. So does that make sense? Does that explain it? And that's where the reporting comes in. You do reporting from the sub-account level. So if you need to do reporting as you're creating this, keep that in mind so you don't have to work backwards to figure it out later. You said that the practical nursing program had their own rubric. Did they load everything into Canvas or did someone else or do that? And what was the setup and startup times to get everything so that it was seamless now? Mm -hmm. So the question was, um, did our instructors have the rubrics already made? Did they put them into Canvas, or did we put them into Canvas? And how did we do the streamlined um, process of that? And at our school, we have everything from literally an instructor who started using his computer last year <laughs> to very savvy computer users. When an instructor comes to us, we ask them what their needs are and what they want us to do. For nursing, we entered in all those rubrics for them. They are very busy. It's not that they wouldn't want to or have the ability. They don't have time. So that's what we did. Dental was very interested in knowing how to do it and doing it on their own. So we did training to teach them how, and they ran with it. And tell them how much training it took. 20 minutes, maybe? Canvas is so intuitive. Um, yeah, 20 minutes. So we mm -hmm. took it in. If anyone's interested in doing this, remember you eat an elephant one bite at a time. They started out with quizzes, you know, little. But we would show them how to do one thing, and then they would divvy out. So this person types wonderfully, they're going to do this, this person knows this really well, so they divvied it out. Um, and then they slowly ended up building everything online. And it took several months. It's, it's not headache free. It's not this beautiful, wow, it's done moment. But once you get it done, it, it is. So keep your eye on the prize while you're going through this process. The payoff is in the end. It's not in the beginning. But the, the payoff in the end is huge. It's really big. And it's done. You don't have to build again. Mm -hmm. It's done and completed so they can now pursue other things in their department they've just never had time or resources to do. Okay, the question is, where are the reports? Where do you find the reports? Go there. 
And that is, you need to have an admin level account. So if you're not an admin, this won't apply to you. Um, but Lee can, um, I don't even know if I can remember how to do this. I might have to get Ryan up here. That's the other thing. If you have questions while you're doing this, Canvas is amazing in their help, in the is forums it? and the the Canvas manuals or just calling whoever you work with at Canvas. They will have you up and running in just a few minutes. Oh, that's right. So you go in the admin account, you go to settings, and then reporting. And we don't have anything set up by terms. That's been a challenge. We have no end dates. There are no beginning dates and no end dates. <laughs> so it's always, that's a challenge. That is a challenge. So in here is exactly where you would, let me go back. So you can set up um, what course you want to do it for, um, what term, and again, we have, and then what it's going to do is it will send you a report in an Excel spreadsheet. Other questions, inspirations, concerns? <laughs> We really hope we've made you guys a little bit excited about what you can do because this has absolutely changed a couple of programs for us, exciting change for these programs for us. The other thing is we felt like at first we were trying to convince instructors, come and look at this, look what it can do for your program. Zero interest. They were just like, mm, that, my welding instructor, that doesn't apply to us, our cabinet may, you, you can't just tell them what this will do for them. If you show them what it will do, everything changes. So with just getting these couple online, we have people coming to us, we want what nursing has. It makes your, if that's your role at your institutions, it makes it a lot easier to get that enthusiasm and get people willing to try it and, and do things with Canvas. And we're willing to give out emails and, and help in any way. If you, you know, have some inspiration down the road, give us a yell. We'll give you our emails. Thank you. Good crowd. Good crowd. <laughs>